Okay, thank you. So welcome everybody to the roundtable discussion today on how to promote peer dignity in sport. I'm Georgia and I'm going to be hosting the event today. I'm a former snowboard cross athlete and I have quite a few years experience in trying to get more women into outdoor sports. But we have an amazing panel of guest speakers today. So I'm going to throw to the speakers individually if you can give us a little bit more information about your career and background. We'll start with Chella Quint which is author, presenter, she's an activist and founder of Period Positive and author of the books Own Your Own Period and Be Period Positive. Chella, if you can kick us off with some of your background. Hello, well, let's see. So I became a drama teacher because my parents were frightened of me getting injured in sport. Um, so I'm really excited that this panel is happening. I was I was a very late bloomer and then uh, I was suddenly shot up to the dizzying height of five foot two. But um, my parents were really worried because all the other kids got bigger than me and I still love playing football and I am dyspraxic. It was really exciting that we found a sport I could play. Uh, I ended up in goal and I kind of excelled at that and that was pretty much it. But I was I enjoyed it a lot. And then my parents started getting a bit worried about all the other girls in the Saturday League just being a foot taller than me suddenly. Uh, and they signed me up for drama classes. And I really was excited about this. I thought oh, improv, this will be fun. Um, so I don't know, I might have been a footballer uh, if, if this hadn't happened. But in the end, I ended up teaching drama, uh, doing a lot of uh, health education issues through drama, finding out that kids responded really well to, to stigmatized topics using drama and the arts and ended up revamping our school's period education curriculum with the help of the young people. And that has sort of blossomed into the period positive campaign. We did a lot of ad busting at first in my school holidays, and it's become the period positivity movement. Uh, young people, marginalized communities, all working together to try and ensure that when we talk about periods, we talk about everyone and everything and don't leave anyone out. Love it, amazing, thank you. <laughs> Uh, then we have Helen Ward, former professional footballer and ambassador at FEW. Hi, everyone. Yep, so I'm a recently retired footballer. I retired last summer from both international and domestic football, played for Wales for over 15 years, managed to get over 100 caps as well, so a very special time. Um, and then I finished my career playing for Watford, where I'm now also the general manager as well as being an FAW ambassador. Thank you, Helen. And then Tanya Martin, which is N Head of Insight and Innovation at Women in Sport. Good afternoon, everybody. Lovely to be here. Yep, as um, Georgia just said, I'm the Head of Insight and Innovation at a charity called Women in Sport. We were founded around 40 years ago. Um, essentially, our mission is to drive gender equality within the sports sector and beyond to make sure that all women and girls can benefit from the lifelong benefits of sport, because we know that doesn't always happen, unfortunately. Um, so my responsibility within the charity is to really head up all of our insight and innovation. So our research um, around women and girls' lives and their relationships with sport and exercise um, and how we can create a better environment for them to be able to you know, engage in sport and physical activity in the way that kind of works for them and thinking about what that insight means in practical terms. So translating it into solutions and ideas and initiatives um, that can support women and girls to be more active and particularly around this topic I would say in terms of um, periods and period dignity we've done a huge amount of work with teenage girls over the past four or five years really trying to explore in depth the impact that puberty has um, and obviously all of the changes that come with that and obviously periods is a very big part of that so it's an area we are really incredibly passionate about in terms of supporting girls to be able to manage that time within their lives um, and making sure that sport is set up in a way for them to be able to do that. Brilliant. Thank you. Then we have Priya Chande, Global Brand Director at Wooka. Hi, everyone. An absolute pleasure to be here. Um, so I, I'm from Wooka. Wooka is um, the reusable period underwear brand for those of you that don't know. Uh, Wooka stands for Wake Up Kick Ass, if anyone didn't know. And that's because we believe that um, anyone with a period should be able to wake up and kick ass uh, to, uh, to the best of their ability on their periods and they should not hold them back. And I think that that is nowhere more relevant and appropriate than in the world of sport, which is why I guess I'm here today uh, to advocate for that. Uh, we launched in 2017 uh, as the first brand to completely replace the need for pads and tampons. So with a very sustainable and eco kind of mission. But along the way with our wake up kick ass spirit, it's always been um, with a view to also smash stigma 
stigma and break the taboos that surround um, periods and all other aspects of menstruation for women and girls throughout all stages and uh, ages um, as they navigate life. So such a pleasure to be here today, especially because we've done a lot of work in the last five years within the area of sport, have some fantastic partners in Wales, uh, Watford FC, Scottish Gymnastics. I can see some familiar faces on this call, um, which is a real pleasure. So I can't wait to bring some of that insight to the table today and share it with other people on the call to give you some hopefully some inspiration on how how you can also become period positive um, places of work and, and places for sport. Um, so yeah, excited. Thanks for having me. Brilliant. Thank you. And what a name for Wooga. <laughs> I love it. Then we have Bethan Woolley, National Women and Girls Participation Manager at Henry Wales. Hi everyone, uh, great to be on the call with you this afternoon. Um, like Georgia said, my role at the FAW is National Women and Girls Participation Manager. I've been in that role now um, for almost three years and um, have been involved in football um, throughout kind of my life. Um, so played at a high youth level and then went to university and um, upon going to university really under started to understand the, the struggles and the barriers that, that females face in football more specifically. Um, so switched my focus at that age to um, ensuring that more girls and more women had an opportunity through football, no matter which path they wanted to go down. Um, so worked in, in England for a time for a period of seven years and moved across to Wales, back to my home country um, a few years ago, um, where really now we're starting to look at breaking the stigma around um, periods and providing opportunities and comfortable environments for women and girls of all ages um, within any aspect of football. Brilliant, thank you. Wow, what a panel. I'm very excited about this discussion. So before we delve into it, just to let everybody know that the session is going to be recorded, so there will be a link available if you then want to re-access the session or if you want to share it with anybody who you think could benefit from it. And if you have any questions at all, just pop them in the chat and we'll try go through in them go through them at the end in the Q&A session. So we'll start off with a little poll, which should be launched on your screen. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. We will be popping that on there now. And it's with regards to period poverty. So what percentage of the world's population do you think does not have access to feminine hygiene products? Do you think it's 5%, 12.5% or 25%? I'll just give you a few seconds to fill that in. Okay, wow, yeah, 25%. And that is the correct answer, which is a staggering over 500 million people, that would be, which is a really sad result. Um, and that is one in 10 people who menstruate have been unable to afford sanitary product, uh, according to Plan International UK in 2017, which is a really sad result. And I mean, period poverty is still very much uh, a big thing now, though we are seeing products being more made available to places like schools. I often see them in places like libraries, museums, but I want to know if this is the same for sports clubs. So I'll come to you, Bethan and Helen now to see if, if this is something that we are seeing in the sports clubs and organizations. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's getting better. Um, we're definitely not in a position where all clubs are providing products currently, um, but we're definitely on the road to achieving that. We we offer an initiative called Environments for Her, the FAW, which really focuses on a whole host of different aspects in terms of ensuring that we have a female friendly environment at our clubs and in our spaces, facilities. Um, and within that, we also talk around providing period products and um, how we can potentially um include them in our kit bags. I know a lot of our leagues have well, as well have joined the, the journey in, in terms of becoming period positive um, and ensuring that they are offering clubs um, access to, to free products as well. Um, but likewise as well, we start looking at the professional game. I know Swansea.com Stadium have, have just become a, a period positive partner as well in terms of offering um, female fans the opportunity to access sanitary products as well. So we're definitely on, on the right path. We're on the right journey. Um, there's a lot of education, I feel, that is, is needed as well in that space. A lot of our coaches in football are male and don't have the same lived experiences as well. So we're, we're on an education journey at the moment, but we're, we're definitely making strides in that area. Yeah, same for, same for me. I'm 
obviously I'm heavily involved at Watford and as a club, I know that the, the stadium and the training ground, there are period products in, in all the bathrooms or toilet spaces. Um, <clears throat> and then for our players as well, we, we have a sort of a, a box of stuff that goes into the changing room. Um, you know, probably not so much the poverty side of it, but you know what female players are like, they forget things all the time, but just to know that if they, if they can't get hold of anything, they will have it in, in the sort of kit bag if they, if, if you like that, that comes with us to home and away game. So as a club, it's been something I think that they've been doing for quite a, a few years now, um, which is great. And being a, a fan myself, as well as working for the club, it's always nice when you do go into the toilets at the stadium that there's things available. And as a staff member at the training ground, um, all the female toilets also have have products readily available, and they're they're restocked on a regular basis as well. Which is which is obviously you know you never know some places it's good to start it, but actually keeping up with it is another thing. But you know from from our point of view, I'm I'm proud to be part of a club that definitely does that. Brilliant. Um, and that is great to hear, to be honest. I was just thinking I take my, oh, she's only three, <laughs> but to the local rugby club. It's a really small rugby club. But actually, I recently saw that in the bathroom they have got, you know, boxes of it. And it is just sort of raising awareness and not being afraid, you know, to offer all these products really in the bathrooms for young girls. What do you think should be included in sports clubs and organisations, bathrooms to make them more period friendly? Uh, Priya, Chella, with like your background, what should we be seeing more of? Do you think? Sure. I mean, I can I can jump in, Chella, if that's all right. First, I think. Um, sure, I'll follow you. So, um, so I'm glad uh, the the guys in Wales and at Watford are seeing communication because we we could have worked hard with those clubs to make sure that that comes is all up and available. I think there's a few things, and it's echoing um, what Bethan kind of started with, which is. None of this can really move forward if we don't educate and if we don't communicate effectively um, with pride about what periods are and without the euphemism, euphemisms and without the blue liquids and really just call these things out for what they are. But also important with that is the allyship and taking the others who don't have periods and that lived experience on that journey with you. Um, we know that the sports industry is male dominated and so therefore there is a journey to go on in order to sort of educate those male members of teams, of clubs, Clubs, of, of staff, you know, any, any of, of parents, of children, you know, whoever that might, husbands, whoever it might be, partners to to really educate them so that they're also along uh, along the journey with you. So I think there's an element of you can put products everywhere, but ultimately if the education and the training is not there, then the products will will end up being kind of just sort of more product for the sake of being, you know, being there. I, I think it's interesting sometimes we we hear about um advocates for period positive workplaces or sports places feeling like they can't get approval on how to sign off budgets for free period products to be put into toilets and I always say well sometimes it's often a case of just making the 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 comparison really obvious you wouldn't not provide toilet paper for free so maybe go to the budget holder and ask them well if you don't you wouldn't not give toilet paper for free and that's a very natural thing that we all have to do every day um if not multiple times a day so how about period products because we also don't have control over that when that period decides to you know turn up unannounced or is on a super heavy day or flow so i think that there's there's that aspect of kind of really kind of encouraging the person that is the main advocate for change within the organization is mentoring and supporting them to find ways to overcome the challenges that they will face and it isn't sadly it's just an, an easy kind of sometimes easy conversation to have nor an easy sign off process to get these things off the ground so those are the kind of two things training and, and obviously product and it would be you know I wouldn't be from Wuka if I didn't say don't forget the power of reusable products in this process. You know, pads and tampons require topping up and filling up and, and constantly keeping replenished in toilets. The power of a reusable brand or product in, in, in the mix is that they don't need to be using those reusable uh, single-use products all the time. They don't need to be burdening on kind of the, the waste and the, the, you know, that can come with those products from an eco pr perspective as well as a club. So really promoting and encouraging training staff and, and members of teams to really like embrace the reusable side because it brings with it so many benefits in terms of not needing to remember to pack them because you've got you know a pair of pants on already or not needing to 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 opt for single use wasteful products so those are my recommendations so it won't surprise anyone to know that wuka has already earned the period positive award 
um, <laughs> and was the first company to earn it. It's also incredibly powerful to hear someone who sells menstrual products for a living absolutely say that products are not the be all and end all of period positivity because that is the truth. Um, so the period positive movement started a billion years ago. I made up the phrase in 2006 because I was promoting a comedy show about periods that I thought would help people outside of school be better at talking about them to support my pupils inside of school who wanted everyone to know. Um, and then it developed into this, this logo and this award that the kids wanted anybody to wear or display to show that they were trustworthy, whether you were a place or a school. So we had period positive places and period positive schools. But over the years, we have developed it into uh, like a tried and tested framework that is not just, you know, stamp of approval for giving out products. It is, you've got to work for it. So we developed 20 parts to a pledge, but they're not all things you have to like achieve at once. They are things you can identify that you already do well or know a lot about and things that you can get better at or can get support with. And the award is free. And the reason it's free is because it's, it's more valuable than money. It is about creating a real culture shift in our society that achieves all of the things that Priya has just been talking about, where we have the education um, beyond products. Um, we look at menstrual literacy as the sort of overarching aim of what period positivity wants to deliver. And we've been defining it recently after um, a pilot with a lot of schools in Sheffield and some, uh, some young people facing charities here that um, it's about body literacy first, so that you know about yourself and you can internalize um, the taboos. Or if you don't have a menstruating body, you can learn about how other people's bodies work. We always say everybody had a room that was a womb. Everybody once lived inside a uterus. Even, you know, those male sports coaches, they have a right to know how those bodies worked and they have a, a responsibility to make sure that anyone with a uterus now can get on well. Then products, what's good for you, what's good for the environment, what's good for the people that you serve or work with. And then after that, media literacy. Why was that blue liquid around for so long? How come movies make fun of periods sometimes still? What can we do to make sure that people who menstruate aren't the butt of the joke? Why don't we see more scenes about menstruation in films? Like, you know, why why don't we why do we panic about leaking? Why isn't why isn't leaking period blood a badge of honor of some kind? Like like other like sports injuries can be like like I, all my skateboarding friends would show off their like elbow scabs. And then after that, finally, is cultural literacy. And I think a lot of us who are already in the period space are working on this for ourselves and starting to share these kinds of messages with our communities. What does it mean to be a disabled menstruator, a queer menstruator, a brown or black menstruator? Like, what does it mean if the space that you just kind of see sometimes that kind of talks about periods a little also doesn't include other aspects of your identity? And how do you reconcile that? So I think a lot of the things that sports clubs are already doing well, looking at diversity, looking at accessibility, looking at you know all genders inclusion, those things can just widen a little bit so that they're tackling what we've started calling institutional menstrual shame. Big institutions, the NHS, the government, education, sport, these are ships that are hard to steer and turn, right? If one person in a club thinks that you know, being period positive is a good idea and wants to investigate it further, they may reach out to us. We can offer the award, you know, we can license it, it's, it's free. But if that person leaves, so does that relationship. And so what's really valuable is if everybody in an organization, everybody at every level is willing to, to open up, to grow and learn. And when it's taboo and stigma, it's hard. And we find joy, play, uh, humor, art, all of these things help. Um, that's my probably about 20 quids worth rather than two pence worth, but there you are. <laughs> Thank you. And it's true, such important points you've all touched on there. I mean, and education is at the basis of it, isn't it? Creating that awareness that it is so natural. Like you said, a skateboarder would show off their injury and blood. Why are we so ashamed of this really natural process, isn't it? Tanya, did you have anything that you wanted to add to that? I think Bethan and Chella have just explained it beautifully, you know, how important the educational piece around this is and also the allyship piece you know because we are we make up half of the population but there is a whole other half of the population that really needs to know and understand what is happening to women in their bodies and girls in their bodies and it particularly in sport as you said Priya because you know lots of sports are led by men they are dominated by men they are the decision makers they are the budget holders they are the policy makers and while we're obviously trying to drive that change in other ways you know we have the conversation has to be started there and has to be had with those men and boys as well you know we shouldn't be 
separately educating boys and girls around you know this is what happens to your body and this is what happens to yours we need to have a shared understanding of each other so that we can appreciate those differences and understand those differences and start to remove some of that kind of stigma away and i think just around the practical points because i know the question was kind of like what needs to be in those bathrooms absolutely products of course we've talked about that but i think what we also don't see in sports clubs is signposting to really good quality information and resources because imagine you are that you know 9 10 11 12 year old girl depending on when they've started and they've walked into that club for the first time and started their period who do they go to for support where do they get information you know and signposting i think is really really important within and around the club to say that there are free period products so that girls don't also have the embarrassment and unfortunately the shame they still feel in asking for those products so, so they know where to access them they can access them for free and that we are signposting them to relevant health and support if they need it um, and we in the past kind of 18 months have had a an initiative called Big Sister up and running within leisure centres um, with our partners Places Leisure and that's all been about understanding how we can create those more female friendly spaces particularly in changing rooms locker rooms wherever it may be but also in the whole club environment the whole leisure space environment so that it becomes a much more period positive friendly place where girls and women know that they can get support they know they can access products and how do we start to as I said break down some of that stigma and taboo actually because I think unfortunately women and girls bodies have just been under a cloud of secrecy for far too long we just don't talk about them because we haven't prioritized them in sport and that is what we really need to change and particularly when you think as we said earlier so many of the men in co in coaching roles as well who are coaching girls and coaching women need to have a fundamental basic understanding of how periods can impact women and girls um, if they're able to coach those people in the right way and support those people in the right way so again that's probably my 30 quid's worth of their bits and pieces but just building on Chella and Priya's fantastic point because I think they are absolutely right it starts with the education it starts with the awareness and it starts with how we communicate that to both men and women and girls amazing thank you and like you said signposting that is such an obvious thing really isn't it but we don't see it no, don't do it <laughs> yeah so thanks for that and and like we've all said you know many people especially like at school age they really get that anxiety of taking part in sport and exercise because they're on their period because they're afraid of leaking or because they don't want their friends to know that they've got their period I mean I remember when I was in school most of the girls used to just sit out because they were on their period and it's such a sad because that is then evolves onto how they feel about sport in the future as well um what I'd like to talk about is what you think the impact periods has on sports performance because I remember seeing you know an interview with Dean Asher Smith the athlete um and how she spoke about openly that she was on a period and she was struggling we don't hear that about really you know athletes at a high level uh Helen I don't know if you can touch on your experience and the impact that maybe you've seen on on what it's like with sports performance yeah I mean for me personally i I get quite bad uh, cramps with my period. So I'd wake up and have to go to training and I'd be in pain. And just the thought of, ex even though I know that exercising does relieve symptoms, the thought of doing it and actually getting up and getting out of bed and actually going and, and getting on with training sometimes was quite hard, particularly on sort of day one and two of, of my period. And I know that that's the same for, for other players and you get different um different symptoms can and obviously affect different people but also I think around football in particular there's been a lot of talk around ACL knee injuries and the potential link to to being on your period for that and, and different injuries as well so I think there's also a little bit of fear and um, because the research not hasn't happened or hasn't been going on for long enough um, I think there is that little worry as well that maybe when you go to training you have to be a bit more careful and then that in turn could affect your performance and all that kind of stuff because you, you can't really you can maybe dip out of training if you need to but if you if it comes on a game day there's not much you can do so there is that fear around it um so a lot more research needs to go into you know that injury in particular but how menstruation and, and periods do affect that and, and different times in a month can affect you in so many different ways which you know for for men and their hormones they're I learned quite recently how they sort of just do this nicely day to day. It's the same thing every day. And then for women, it's like this all over the place. So it's just, um, 
it's a bit of a minefield and I think that can affect performance and uh, yeah, the, the pain, the headaches, the fatigue, all those kind of different things can, can really affect performance. But at the same time, as I mentioned before, actually exercise can be really beneficial to ease some symptoms. And I think that maybe needs to be the more positive message surrounding it that we give to particularly younger girls. Cause I, I remember when I was younger and within the first sort of year of me starting my period, I, I'd wake up on a Sunday and if I, I had my period, I'd say to my mum, I don't want to go to football. I don't want to play. I'm in too much pain. She'd make me go cause she knew it was good for me. Um, and I'm obviously I'm glad she did, but I think that's what we need to sort of teach our, our younger girls is actually going out and doing some exercise not only will ease the symptoms but it will make you feel happier and it'll get you out of that sort of period fuzz that some some people do experience 100 percent. it's so interesting my next question was going to be actually about the symptoms because personally same i always found in a way that it helped me but so many people still don't understand that or i mean some people have such severe symptoms that they cannot get out of bed and like you know, I agree that, but maybe should we be changing, like you say, the awareness, the language that we are using when we are trying to promote sports for girls whilst they're on their periods? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think it's it's key to do that, really. Um, I'm sure other people have got uh, opinions as well, so I'll, I'll let someone else speak as well. We have a, a key phrase around this that comes up again and again that might be helpful and then another little thing that's a practical tip the phrase is try and explain periods um not so that they're a terrible thing that happens to you but so that they're part of a larger cycle that is a really interesting thing that bodies can do so that's that's the sort of saying that we try and promote but practically speaking um a lot of people forget to center ovulation they might forget about it but they might also be a bit worried that if you talk too much about ovulation, all the kids will just go get pregnant. And that's not <laughs> the case. The more young people know about ovulation and fertility, the less likely they are to accidentally get pregnant. So what's really valuable practically is talk about that the period between the last day of your period and the day you ovulate is when you're at like your most excited and ready. Um, not just because in the olden days, that was maybe how cave people went and made babies, but it's because that's, your body is just sort of amped up and there's a great way to put that into practice whether it's in sport or something creative or making business decisions like all of that stuff as well as you know maybe going out and looking for people to date all of that stuff is really good skills that your body can do then and then maybe at the later stage of your cycle wind down and I remember reading a couple of great articles about um the the England women's team and how when they uh, won the Euros which I got to go to some of the matches of in Sheffield which was amazing um but like when they were like doing all of that um the the cycle charting was what was helping them get you know as far as as Wembley because what they were doing was doing I think and somebody who's more about sports training than me can correct me if I get this wrong they were doing the more intensive active cardio stuff in the first part of their cycle and then they were getting toward the sort of PMT and period bit they were actually starting to do slow stretching kind of exercises and and just be a bit more restful and, and patient with themselves. And because they kept that cycle up, they were able to get as far as they did and make everybody so proud. So yeah. Yeah. And I think I think at that point I'll jump in because you've you've it's a nice segue to what I was going to say, which was I think there's a couple of issues here. First of all, is exactly as Chella says, this fixation on the period and the bleed itself, when in actual fact, we're talking about cycles and hormones, which are, uh, to Helen's point, not like our, you know, counts are, are, you know, men that have it very fairly consistently, you know, but a few dips up and down here and there, but we're a constant up and down and, you know, um, and, and so I think there is a real importance of um, not only making sure that people at, at a young age, young girls understand that the menstrual cycle is a cycle. It's not just a period, it's more than that. And that has different phases, which comes with education. Um, but even as we get older is encouraging individuals to understand their own bodies. And there is a wealth of information that is available through these cycle tracking apps out there, which honestly, I mean, I've started using it in the last three years and it has blown my mind how much I've started to learn about myself, let alone other people. Um, so I think that that is a really important aspect is is just not talking about periods as though they are the bleed because that is literally just one aspect or one phase of the cycle um but if we take it back to 
to kind of the impact that not acknowledging or or not confronting the symptoms of the the menstrual cycle can have we at wuka have have really focused on teenage girls as like the starting point and the reason for that being is again similar to chella uh, chella's work in education is that we know that more than four in five uh, teenage girls, that's 84% of teenage girls say that their interest in sport diminishes after starting their periods. And really sadly, 45% of girls drop out of sport by the age of 14. Now, the benefits of sport, not only on their physical health, but on their mental health and also their broader, wider skills, such as teamwork, resilience, communication, are so huge that if we're losing 45% of them by the age of 14, we are really missing out on not only talent for the professional sporting industry, but actually a wealth of skills that our young girls need to have in order to become incredible women um, and people as they progress in their careers, whatever path they choose to take. So I think for us, we've really focused being ultimately a product business uh, with products. We've really focused on helping to avoid that dropout of sport by providing them with products in the form of our sports shorts, our sports leggings, our sports swimwear that mean that actually if it is about the bleed and if it is that one week a month that they decide to skip, that they don't have a reason to because now there's no fears of like, I can't do that because I don't, I can't go in the swimming pool with a pad on. It's okay. You've got a swimsuit now, etc. So we have dealt with that at a practical level, but we really have indexed with the young people because we can see that that starting young will help us to kind of get, you know, to keep them in sport for longer. And then, as I say, with the work we do with more adult clubs and, and kind of older older individuals, it's around kind of understanding the cycle as a whole and increasing that under that awareness of how the cycle and the impact of your changes in your cycle can impact your performance, et cetera, and working with clubs at local levels to be able to really impart that knowledge um, across, across, you know, uh, all genders and all people of all backgrounds. I agree on everything you said. And like you say, it's so important to teach the, these young, well, young girls about the whole cycle. Like yourself, I'm the same. As an adult, I've learned more about my whole cycle and what is actually happening to my body than I did when I first came on my period. And I was thinking, why aren't we being taught this when we are starting our period and actually understanding what is going on with our body? Because that is what is linked then to the whole anxiety, isn't it? What is actually happening? Why is this happening to me? Um, even though it's so normal um, and with regards to that um, and obviously everything that goes with it um, there was a, a campaign which is called hashtag blood normal that was started in 2017 by a company called Bodyform to normalize menstruation blood using real blood like you mentioned before and not the blue liquid we previously saw on adverts and Wuka launched a similar campaign last year showing blood clots in the shower and apparently received over 300 complaints which yes being kick-ass um comes comes with uh comes with its challenges sometimes but it it the 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 principle of being a kick-ass brand is speaking the truth and not hiding behind euphemisms and and all the shame and the kind of language and depiction of periods that has until now really just perpetuated this shame that we just are surrounded by all the time so yes we did dare to show um to share to show periods and not just periods but blood clots which are an incredibly common aspect that we have all experienced at some point um on tv it did gather the attention of some individuals um as i'm as as i'm sure it we knew it was going to um but every single every single complaint was upheld and and um we are still on air still showing on sky tv today and very proudly so because we believe that this is entirely natural um i uh, we'll never forget something that the Welsh rugby, team, Welsh rugby Union team that we work with mentioned to us, which was we get nosebleeds on pitch all the time and um, and we don't think anything of it. Why would we care if a little bit of blood went through our, our shorts, you know, during 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 a match? And, and it, that was really encouraging to me. Now, I do applaud the efforts taken by the FA and, you know, with the Lionesses and other and other you know, Wimbledon recently also saying agreeing to sort of allowing to soften the rules on white sh white skirts and shorts for for women. Um, but I think there is a broader debate to be had here. You know, and I, maybe today is not the place for it. But I know Chella and I would certainly debate this for a while. Which is, you know, do we need to be hiding it? And is it is that actually overcoming the problem itself? However, 
if anyone wants in the room wants tips on how a sports club could be more inclusive, if that is something that majority of your team members or, you know, community members feel would be helpful, then embrace that. You know, with Watford FC, we very proudly work with them on their on their shorts and their branding. Uh, they've got darker shorts for the for the girls and for the women. So that's obviously something that helps. Um, anything that can just help to reduce that level of anxiety. Uh, but at the same time, not not. not shy away from the fact that periods happen in, in all of their trickly, gushy, rushing, blood clot ridden forms. So there you go. I was, it's I had in my notes to mention that. And I'm so I'm like just delighted that you mentioned that, Bria, because yeah, absolutely. It's like uh the darker shorts is a foot in the door to a bigger conversation. But um my pupils and I worked on a, a lesson plan once that was uh, called Stains TM. What if you market the period stain as the sports emblem? You know, what if that's like the swoosh, you know, and that's the recognizable logo? And how does that get you thinking about leaking differently? But that's like step two. Step one is definitely whatever gets you in the door and keeps you keeps you on the pitch. So, yeah, but we could definitely talk about it tons longer. The advertising side of things is really fascinating to me in particular because that was where I got my start. I was, when I was a kid, I saw clots for the first time and I genuinely thought my liver was falling out. I didn't know what clots were. I was petrified. It took ages to work up the nerve to find out what was going on. And I didn't want that to happen to young people. And I noticed that all of the teaching resources that I was working with came from disposable menstrual product companies um, and didn't cover a lot. They kind of were like, here's some free samples. This is the basics. Off you go. And there were teachers that felt really squeamish who, you know, were like, okay, that'll do. Off you have it. There you are. No mention of reusables, nothing like, you know, about plastic free disposables, nothing beyond products, you know. And when we started working on it and kind of like revamping it, I was really starting to take adverts to task. So we had a lot of campaigns going about get rid of the blue liquid. So, you know, it it was great when a big multinational disposables brand did it in 2017. But it was really great when, when Moon Cup did it in 2013 with a web advert. So I think reusable products and independent companies have come a really long way that WUCA is on, you know, a big mainstream television channel with a TV ad you know, and yeah, there are complaints, but there are complaints about lots of different menstrual products. And I think that's a bigger issue um, around how people feel when they see menstrual products in public. And I think there's so much that like allies in different sectors can do to support that. So, you know, like you guys wanting to become a period positive club means that that message is getting out to more people. WUCA doing an advert means that message is getting out to more people. And, you know, we are the media. And we as customers and as, you know, as, as tastemakers and whatever roles we hold, we create that stuff as well as consume it. So I, I think really the biggest thing to acknowledge around that is uh, the people who maybe didn't have the power before are now taking the power and making really powerful choices with with what they've got. So when they've got when they've got the mic, they're they're shouting, you know, about being open about periods or they're or they're handing it off to somebody else who can do that. And I just think that's really incredible in terms of, you know, empowerment and empowerment of girls and women um, and other people who menstruate. I think that that's just an incredible result and that keeping the momentum going would be amazing. 100%. And maybe the other adverts will change too one day. We'll see. We'll come back to period products in just one moment. I think we'll launch another poll um, as we've been talking about awareness. And this one is with regards to endometriosis. It should pop up on the screen now. So how many people assigned female at birth are affected by endometriosis? Do you think it's one in 1,000, one in 100, or one in 10? I'll give you a few seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, these are quite close. So. 16%, I don't know if you can see the results on your screen, but 16% of you said one in 1,000, 45% one in 100, and 39 said one in 10. And the answer is one in 10. One in 10 people have endometriosis, endometriosis, sorry. And again, like we spoke about awareness, so many people that I have spoken to don't actually realize that they have endometriosis until they're much older. So they are affected by it, suffer with it for so many years, and then just when they're adults then, which is 
quite sad. Um, and again, I think that goes back to everything that we've mentioned with regards to being open about it, talking about it, more research and awareness. Um, but as you mentioned about period products, um, you, like you said, there's tampons, menstrual cups, sanitary pads, um, reusable period pants. Do you think there's certain products which are best for certain sports? Bethan, have you seen like particular differences or? Yeah, so so from myself, I was probably one of the majority when we started having the conversations at the FAW because I just wasn't aware of all of the different products that were available, to be completely honest. And it wasn't until from a work capacity that we started exploring the different options um, that I started to educate myself a little bit more in terms of um, how hygienic all the different problem, uh, all the different products are understanding kind of the sustainability of the products ensuring that actually there is no fear that if i'm going to wear period pants they're not going to leak they're going to be absolutely fine really educated myself over the the past year or so so that we can then start spreading the the message even further but like many of, of you have said on on the call is that actually we just didn't get that education when we were younger um so unless we go and educate ourselves is how are we supposed to know what would fit best for whichever sport we're doing or whichever activity we're doing? Um, so so from, from my understanding, I definitely don't have the expertise of some of the people on the call around the different the different products that are uh, available to, to particular particular sports. And I think it, it it's something that we need to explore a little bit more in terms of sharing that message with our clubs, with our leagues, with our girls that are participating to explore different options um, to understand exactly what fits best for them. I think everybody is an individual as well. And something that works for, for one person might not work for another. And it's a case of, of trial and error a little bit in terms of what actually makes you feel comfortable um, and also alleviates that fear factor as well. So that actually you're not worrying about um, being on your period when you're playing the sport. You only have to worry about performing um which is the way in my eyes that it that it should be so i probably don't have enough knowledge to share what would be best for football but i think from from my understanding and the education that we've received here at the fw is around understanding what works best for you as an individual 100 percent. thank you beth and, and it is it's knowing about the products and feeling comfortable with trying something new when you are doing sport, isn't it? So I guess it's just trying it in our daily life then. Tani, I saw you nodding. Was there something that you wanted to add to that as well? Yeah, absolutely. I think Bethan's hit the nail on the head. It's about having that education of the broad variety of products that are out there and finding what works for you. And I think within that, we just need to be sensitive, particularly to young girls who are just starting out in their periods, actually, and thinking about what they are going to feel most comfortable using and doing. And I think a lot of the issues that, that Priya and Keller talked about earlier in terms of the kind of lack of education and the, the scaremongering, really, that is around periods because of the lack of knowledge. And that leads to a lot of myths and mis misconceptions around, around different products, around usage. And the fact that sport is a very physical thing that you do, obviously, you know, instills that fear of things like leakage and being looked at and, and possibly, you know, embarrassing yourself and all of those things we shouldn't have to worry about. But unfortunately, we have been almost conditioned to. Um, so I think, yeah, that education around those different products is really important, but also being very sensitive to the age of those young girls as well and what is going to be most suitable for them. We know that some you know, girls generally are starting their periods earlier and earlier all the time. And so having conversations around something like a, a sanitary product, a, a towel, would be very different to having a, a conversation around something like a menstrual cup, for example. So I think it's just also about layering that sensitivity and being mindful of who we're talking to at what stage of their periods they're at um, and understanding either you know the, not, the lack of knowledge and information they've probably already not had from either schools or home, wherever it may be. Um, so just thinking, I think, sensitively about that and 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 educating girls on what products might be best but enabling them to have a, some of that trial and error like Beth said and giving them some the support to do that is really important yeah and if I, if I might add to that I think so there's the Beth and I actually love that you started this because I think you represent um what is pretty much the the majority of people out there who actually don't know that there are other options beyond just the pad and the tampon that you were kind of shoved as a young person, like Chella said, at the age of eight, off you go, here you go, use them, you know, have a go, see what happens. And you're like, oh, okay, what do I do with this? Where do I put it? Where does it go? Which hole? Da, da, da. But the reality is, is that um, the majority of people don't 
know that there is a choice. So I think this comes down to two things. It comes down to one, knowing that you have a choice, knowing that there are choices out there. That is the work that we are doing to make people aware that choice exists beyond the mainstream that we have all been just blindly served for the majority of our lives. So you represent a very large proportion of people who we have a mission and a, and a responsibility to educate and to inform in a very kind and gentle and welcoming way. The second is access, right? Accessibility is everything too. We only just, after five years of campaigning, um, successfully got tax removed from period pants and a period underwear. Prior to that, period tax was abolished on single-use products, but pants were still considered a luxury item. In what world do we live in that that can be deemed a luxury item? And we've still got a way to go because now period sportswear are still not included in that tax break. So we we continues to continue its mission. We were on a call with HMRC and the government the other week to say, it's great, thanks so much for removing the tax, but what about period swimwear? What about period leggings? What about period shorts? So, you know, we have so much of a way to go in order to not only create that, make that choice more widely available, get it onto the supermarket shelves and into the mainstream of channels and arenas where people shop and browse in order to know that they exist. Um, but also to make sure that it's accessible from a price point perspective, because this shouldn't be something for the for the reserved for those that can afford it and have the privilege to be able to afford it. This needs to become completely democratized and accessible for everyone. So that's the those are the two things I think this hinges upon entirely. The, the other thing I would like to add as well is, again, just decentering periods from all of this as well. We're talking about menstruation as a whole. We're talking about cycles. So therefore, we're talking about life stages and different things that can happen at different life stages. You might be going through postpartum. You might be going through pregnancy. You might be going through perimenopause and menopause. That there are other factors to consider other than just that first period, other life stages for which you might need other products too. Incontinence, something we've not talked about on this call at all, but is something that is equally as important. Um, and at this point, I, I will flag the amazing work of the Scottish Gymnastics Association who we're working with and we're proud to have partnered with. They undertook a survey that found that 63% of young gymnasts experience urine leaks during performance, right? Urine leaks sometimes before they've even had a period because they're, you know, the work that they're doing uh, on the mats at an early age. We need to consider a lot more um, factors and, and issues that women have in, and young girls in sport uh, other than just periods, but know that there are solutions and products that are out there. Um, and we myself, Chella, and everyone on the call are here to help all the clubs and all the advocates on the call today beyond this session to help you to bring that education to the fore in whatever way you need, um, including information on what products are there as well. So that's my contribution. Yeah, we, we meet people where they are, whether that's teaching a cheerleading cheer about the four types of products. So we have internal external, disposable, reusable, but for really little ones, so I think Tanya might enjoy this, is inside, outside, throw away, keep using. Something as simple as that. We call it the menstrual product mambo. It's very easy to teach it, but it, suddenly the idea is in your mind that there's more than one type of product out there. But we, we're really, we want, we believe anyone can be period positive and we want everyone to be. Um, the young people asked to have this special logo and phrase trademarked so that we could protect it from people who didn't want to do the work. But everybody we've met is like a really hardworking bunch and it's free to earn. So we really would love it if everybody would get in touch. We are working out strategies for scaling up to, to get everybody, but it's, it's a mindset. And that mindset of we don't know everything yet, but, but there's always more to learn and we're always learning and growing. I think it's true for the whole world. Like, the, you know, around the wor world, we have partners who do work aligned with period positive who are also exploring this. There's um, a, a charity in India who's looking at being more period positive in sport right now who reached out. There's, um, you know, there's a global conference about um, sort of menstrual knowledge where they're talking about this. And, you know, it would be fascinating if there was, you know, periods at the Olympics being like a huge topic next year, like this or this year now, gosh. And, you know, we, we we would love for this to be a thing we never have to do ever again. Like we'd love to be obsolete one day, but it's so exciting having, having so many colleagues in this space. And it I don't want anyone to think that because they don't know what's out there, that they're, they're not entitled to find out, you know, somebody next to you will know. And I think one of the most 
simple and positive things any young person can do or that anyone can teach a kid to do in sport or women in sport is don't don't be afraid to ask you know don't be afraid to ask questions don't be afraid to talk about periods with someone beyond your your sphere normally because there's, there's there's no silly questions and if there are we will all just have a really good laugh about it and then we'll figure it out I agree Helen you had your hand up was there something you wanted to mention yeah I was just going to go back to the the awareness of products and um as Priya's mentioned we could worked with us at Watford and, and last year came in and spoke to us as a team um and I was just sort of gutted that I'd only really found out about these or these have only come to to light in the latter stage of my career because I think when beforehand you'd hear the word period pants and you imagine these big horrible things that just aren't comfortable and they're bulky and that sort of stigma around them but when Wuka came in and talked to us and there were thongs there were briefs there were all kinds of different styles shapes colors of everything and you think well actually that's so much nicer to wear particularly during sport because it's comfortable you know a lot of our players will wear a thong to play and that's just what they like but on their period do they have to change that so I think that awareness it was more it was kind of like an awareness and a thank you really to Wuka for for enlightening us as a group of players and you know they were kind enough to give us all a, a pair each everybody wanted you know we signed up and gave our sizes and preferred style and yeah I, I still use them now even though I'm not playing and I just think they're they're a brilliant product and yeah it was kind of just a, a thank you for raising that awareness but also for sharing their amazing products with us. Amazing. Thank you. You've sold them. I'm going to have to try them next time I do sports. <laughs> um, I'm conscious of time. So I wanted to get the Q&A because I know we've got a few questions. Just one. Well, it's, this could be a whole discussion on its own. But you've all kind of mentioned it. And Chella just said about um, feeling free to ask questions. We are surrounded by a lot of male coaches. I had many male coaches in my experience. How, what can we do to get the male coaches to help young girls is there silence you know how can we get them to be more open or accommodating in an appropriate manner for young athletes bethan or tanya i'm yeah i'm, I'm happy to take this one so I, I mentioned before we have an initiative called um environments for her um, and within that is uh a section where we very much focus on the practicalities um and the support that we can provide to to young females or women um whilst they're on their menstrual cycle as well so um a few areas that we touch on in in there are, are things around the changing rooms ensuring the sanitary bins for one as well um in the toilets and not just in the changing room um, and locks on doors, all those types of things to ensure that our females feel confident um, and comfortable in terms of of being on their period while they're in those environments but also around the male coaches understanding each individual a little bit more um i know from an emotional aspect um when i'm when i'm due on i am an absolute nightmare to be around and if i was on the football pitch um there would be tears there would be tantrums um, and it's just around understanding our players a little bit more um, and not knowing exactly you know what time of the month and things like that but just understanding how our players are um, and how we can support our players a little bit more. We we look at on-pitch considerations as well um, and creating that safe space. Um, we also touch on um, having volunteers within the, the, the club that maybe aren't the coaches. It may be a parent or it may be just an ally that comes along and, and supports those conversations. And it could could be any aspect of, of a young female's life that they may be, want to confide in somebody about and it doesn't have to be around the menstrual cycle but um just somebody that is in the club that um can have those confidential conversations and um, maybe if a young female doesn't feel quite as comfortable going to speak to the coach who who may be a male or may not be a male in, the, in those situations as well so um we explore a whole a whole host of avenues and we provide that training to any of our clubs that that choose to to attend our workshops as well and we're we're looking at vamping them up to to ensure that every club across Wales has access to that education and um, we also include it now within our um one of our coaching licenses as well and um, so providing all coaches and um, that go through our C license and um, understanding of performance based um side effects to to being on your on your period or through the menstrual cycle but also and um, considerations during that time as well so we're 
we're on our on our way to support in terms of education, but there's still a whole host that, that we can do. And um, it's been really good to hear some some stuff on this call, actually, that we can take away as well as an association, because we're never at that end point. We're always learning in terms of how we can support um, our clubs and our females even further as well. Amazing. Thank you for that. Um, before we move on to the Q&A, uh, we're going to touch upon the training that is available for people working in sports organisations and clubs within the area. If there's any other, if any of the panel have any other information of training that they would like to mention. Um, no, other than to say we provide a whole host of free resources. We know that such clubs, small organisations, um, don't have endless amounts of time, don't have endless numbers of people on hand to get these things off the ground. So if it's a case of a, a poster that you need to hang, you know, to, to print out and put up in your changing rooms, um, just just let us know. Reach out after this um, call. We'd be more than happy to help. Um, and, um, and, and just also to say, lean on us for resources you know we we don't do any of this work to keep it in our own camp we keep do it to share it and to spread the word because we know that if we do that then we ultimately get to our end goal faster um and I, i'm we join forces with cello and with the period positive kind of movement from day dot to do that as well so i'm sure we can join forces together to help to provide something that caters to everyone if needs be off the back of this call um, and on the topic of product, you're all welcome to have some Wooker at a discounted price. So I'll pop a discount code in the in the chat for everyone because I think there's some love going on with the Wookers today. So I'll I'll share that in the Wooker chat. discounts are amazing, everybody. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't think I've paid full price ever. And that's not from like special favors, except maybe once, but like the rest of the time, their sales are great. But anyway. Um, we offer the period positive award to anyone. We also have noticed a, re a, a surge of interest lately, which we have got volunteers across the UK who will help, help us meet, but it's free to earn the award, uh, but it's it's registered. So that means it's it's got value. So we do ask people to ask permission to use it, but then display it so that any young people or partners or colleagues who see it know. And if you've done any th other things around uh, periods or reproductive health, or uh, queer inclusion or disability inclusion, those are often things that feed into evidence you can show that you've, you've used to earn the award more quickly. Um, another thing is we have resources on our website, but we've also just put out a set of um, activities with young people um, that they created with their teachers. And we don't have a PE themed one yet. So if there are any sports folks who'd be interested in partnering with some young people and trying out the, the design sprint kit, with those young people and creating a resource. We are piloting them now and we're launching them in May. We're also launching uh, two campaigns right now that you can get involved in. One is Sheffield's been a period positive city for five years this year. Uh, it was announced in an early day motion in parliament in 2019. And we're looking at what does it mean to be a period positive city for five years? And we'd love other cities and local councils to get involved. We did some work with Swansea Council a few years ago through STOP who also have earned the period positive award. They're the first charity to do so. And we've got a campaign going that's linked to my PhD, which is around intergenerational conversations around the entire menstrual span. So it's called Connecting the Dots. We'll be talking about it uh, this month and International Women's Day to include all genders of menstruators. And it's about how do you how do you deal if you're somebody who's approaching perimenopause and you've got a preteen who's driving you bonkers? And what do you do to cope with with those transitions together? And what what do you wish you'd learned? Uh, when you were either of those ages and who can you go to for support? So we're just encouraging those kinds of conversations. Um, and so it's really exciting to have all of that kind of going on. Please come, please talk to us. We're here. Um, it's so great to have been on this call with everybody. But yeah, it's it, it's great that period positivity is spreading. We, we want it to, to remain exciting, meaningful and valuable to everyone who gets involved. So many amazing things happening. Um, so I do Georgia, want to... Can I just can I just add from our perspective as well? Women in sport, if that's okay. So I can't hear you. Yep, I can hear you now. Sorry, audio just cut out. Um, so in terms of what we can offer from women in sport, obviously we um a lot of our work is is very much driven by research and advocacy. So we do a huge amount of insight into the lives of women and girls completely across the lifespan all the way from primary girls to women in menopause and later life so our website uh, is packed full of research reports and insight reports and solutions and recommendations to help drive more positive engagement for women and girls across the life stage and as i said as a result of our big sister uh, initiative that we piloted last year with places leisure which is now still ongoing across the places leisure sector um 
we have a big sister website which is designed by girls for girls in order to help them navigate the challenges of puberty and particularly periods and all of the bodily and emotional things that are going on during that life stage for girls so I would signpost that in, in terms of sending girls for support and, and, and resources and we also offer workshops as well so if you would like us to kind of come into any of your organizations and do workshops about how to better engage women and girls across the life stage understanding what's happening for them what are some of the solutions uh, we'd be really happy and open to have some of those conversations too so just wanted to check in our, our, our little bit of, of support that we provide to amazing thank you tanya um i want to mention and then i know we're gonna overrun just for a few minutes um accelerate sport have a special limited offer discount for their course promoted uh, promoting parent dignity in sport which is for event guests only there might be a little video that's going to play on here as well and the you'll have a saving of 20 percent of the course and the discount code will be sent after this as well um, meetings can also be booked with accelerate sport to discuss a range of courses that they offer from equality and diversity tackling racism and engaging girls in sport i'm not sure if reese is going to play a little video menstruation is a natural biological process and it's quite likely that it's been experienced by people within your sports club or organization menstruation can have various effects on an athlete's performance and well-being and members of your club might face specific challenges during their periods, such as the need for more frequent bathroom breaks, managing menstrual products, and dealing with discomfort or pain. The Promoting Period Dignity in Sport Elian course will address menstrual health in the world of sport and aim to support you in your role to ensure the people that you work with can perform with confidence and without worry. When you enrol on the course, you will work towards the following learning outcomes. Understanding the menstrual cycle and what period products are available. Understand the impact of stigma and period poverty. Identify the impact periods can have in a sporting context. And discover what you can do to support people with periods in your sport. Menstruation is so that was that and we have got three questions through so I will go through them quickly we've got Wendy at Scottish Athletics asks what have you found is the most impactful way to educate your athletes on openly speaking about all things periods is there anyone that would like to answer it uh, it's really simple uh, we use humor and joy uh, if you have shame, if you've done any reading around the work of Brené Brown, who researches shame, you know that when you talk about something shameful, the more you talk about it, the more everyone cringes up. Um, so humor, joy, sport and art all really help. Uh, just find a different focus and then talk around that other focus and suddenly you're you're winning. Brilliant. Um, anybody else want to add to that at all? No, I'm just going to completely agree with Chella. I think it's all about bringing more light and humour and joy to it and actually realising that periods can be positive. It's, it's not about having a very negative uh, kind of mindset towards that, but being, also being realistic, you know, and I think once we start talking about stuff, we actually just want to keep talking about stuff. So it's once you break that barrier and you break that wall and you're able to get women and girls to kind of align on what, what they're thinking and, you know, share their experiences. I find that actually once we get going, we will just keep talking about it and, and, unpicking the world and putting it to rights so yeah I think just having that really positive slant on that and seeing and appreciating how amazing our bodies are I think that's really important actually in terms of the way that we frame those conversations yeah and that really helps when 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 talking about periods is the positive act it helps people who are having really difficult times mm. with their periods realize that it is maybe just them and they do need to see a doctor that not everyone is necessarily suffering as badly as they are just because everyone thought it was all doom and gloom in public doesn't mean it, it really is as bad for everybody else so you know, it gives them people empowerment and agency to, to get the help they need. 100% agree. And like you say, on actually appreciating our bodies for everything they go through and what they can do. Um, another question from Annie at British Taekwondo. Uh, taekwondo is a sport where women are expected to wear white trousers as part of the uniform. What suggestions can we give our coaches to support their female participants when on their periods to make them feel more comfortable? This is a really interesting question, actually. Priya or anybody? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, that our, our underwear is leak proof. So I really do encourage them to try it. I think a lot of this, though, um, not just our own underwear is around just ensuring that 
the people in sport are aware of their own cycles and their flows and how heavy they are. There's probably a case of um, one person having had a bad incident or a leak. When that happens, you embrace it to all the points that Chella and Tanya and everyone else has said today. It's it it's okay. It happens, right? But it doesn't need to be the end of the world. There, but thereafter, it's about making sure that the teams are aware of like what their flow is and what they need for that flow. So perhaps they need extra coverage. Perhaps they need to wear boxers. So that like the boxer shorts that we offer that have built-in gussets, we have up to super heavy flow, which can hold up to the equivalent of 12 tampons and eight pads. So, you know, you're talking about the, the, the space has evolved so much and we have done so much investigation and innovation around what cap the capabilities of these products are now. Um, and as Helen very kindly said, you know, they're not big bulky things. They are, they're super thin, you know, some of them are seamless, VPL free. We've really thought of everything. This product and this brand that we've created is designed to overcome all those challenges that all these young girls and women have been telling us for so long. So um, I would say wear those white Taekwondo uniforms with pride and have no worry about leaking um, because WUKA are completely leak proof and we test them for that because we want people to wear the white trousers. Whether that's And, you know, if you do leak, style it out exactly. you know maybe just be like these are our sponsors right now actually exactly. <laughs> stains tm <laughs> i think that's something that we do um which didn't come up earlier though which might also uh, help with male staff supporting um we, a, a lot of people who menstruate self-edit because they think the guys aren't ready but when i i did a, a show based on the research with the young people at the edinburgh fringe and every year people come up to me from the audience guys couples and they would say like what can I do to support my girlfriend? Or, you know, can I ask you this question? Because my girlfriend doesn't talk about it, even though I'm ready to talk about it. And sometimes dads come up to me after workshops or public speaking events and say, my daughter's 12. She'll talk about this with her mom, but not with me. But I know all this stuff. Can we, you know, like I read your book, like what, what can I do? And they don't want to just leave the book around and walk away. They want to engage. So I think um, being willing to participate in those conversations and not feeling you have to self-edit around like cis guys because a, a, a lot of them are up for it they've learned they're woke they're ready you know just give them the benefit of the doubt and, and give it a go brilliant and a final question from Catherine at your trust rochdale it is important that we are sorry it is important that as we work inclusively we recognize that we might have transgender men and non-binary individuals who menstruate how do you think we should approach ensuring that they receive the same support around menstruation? So we, I'm going to jump in real fast and say this is an amazing question and thank you for bringing this. Um, it's, it's something that a lot of sports clubs are navigating very difficulty, difficultly with, diff with great difficulty at the highest level, but it can be very simple. Um, some people who you think menstruate do and some people who you don't think menstruate don't and vice versa. Um, putting pads in the gents is always really welcome. Um, there's a lot of trans guys who use the boys' toilet, um, but who still menstruate. And so having products in every loo is great. Having the bins in every loo is great. Um, and it's it's something as simple as that. Uh, having boxers or, or you know, sort of activewear as part of your product offering, if you design um, reusable products is really, is really great. Having trans guys in your promotional materials, your advertising, including non-binary people, um, in your in your sports brochures, having a policy that it has inclusive language, um, all of these things are like cultural shibboleths. You know, they're they're an indication to trans and non-binary young people that they are welcome in your space and that they're welcome in the conversation. Even something as simple as changing a word can make someone feel safe. And I think it it, it we often feel unsafe in sport regardless of our gender, because sport is can be big and scary. You know, like my parents didn't want me to keep playing when I was 12. Maybe, maybe you know, they were worried about my physical safety, but mental health wise, it would have been amazing to have carried on playing football for a couple of more years. I would have loved it. Um, and so I think that like, you know, every young person deserves that opportunity. And I'm I'm so glad that you, you asked that question. I think there are a lot of trans young people who are feeling very alienated by the national dialogue about trans inclusion right now. And we, we can do a great, great service to trans young people and trans adults by, by acknowledging and, and uplifting that, you know, that they are included. Thanks, Chella, for answering that one. Like you said, a great question as well. I'm just making sure that there's no other questions. I think we are good. Some lovely messages. Someone says, shout out to the men and non-menstruators who have attended this webinar, 100%. 
and I think that is all with questions. So thank you to all the members of the panel. That was a great discussion. I really, really enjoyed it and really informative. And um, for everybody that attended, thank you for being here. And I, I really hope that everything we have discussed will give you something to go away with and put into practice hopefully and a lot of knowledge and experience to take home so thank you so much i hope you have a lovely rest of the day and um, that it's not raining where you are <laughs> yeah thank you thanks so much bye everybody thank you bye bye thank you